Yeah, let's get controversial. So first yeah. question is, are they worth going to? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Listen, we can end the interview now. <laughs> we can end the interview there. That's the bluff. That's the bottom line up front right there. I Look, I catch a lot of flack for this. Um, I have a I have a love-hate relationship with those conferences, right? So you tell me, Neil, is it worth going? Is it pointless? It, it's, it, it's, it, it's, it is pointless to go if... The most common answer that I've heard from people that have so so again remember I've led massive security teams in my entire career Fortune 100 security teams and, and every year pre COVID it was it was no doubt that I'd get asked by my team Neil I want to go to Black Hat or DEF CON can I go to Black Hat or DEF CON and I would ask them why because I want to hear the answers and they're like because the talks look really amazing this year. And especially for for DEF CON, I would say, cool, if the talks look so good, you'll have no problem waiting seven days when they come out on video for them to watch on YouTube. And the look on their face, the blood just kind of drains because they're like, oh, shoot, <laughs> that argument went out the window. <laughs> Wrong answer. So be honest with yourself. If you're going for the talks, then you can wait for the talks to hit YouTube before you see them. And that is OK. So again, be honest, it's not worth going just for the talks. So the, so the number one theme, you know, before we get into this that I'm going to harp on a lot, David, is, is to be honest with yourself, right? And let's lay some ground rules when we talk about being honest with yourself. When you hear about these conferences and you're coming into the cybersecurity space, you're immediately lulled by this this mentality that oh my god black hat and defcon are the the cornerstones of my career and i'm nobody if nobody if i don't go to black hat and defcon we put a lot of imposter syndrome on people um to to basically make them feel like you're useless if you don't go to these conferences and so it tricks people it tricks a lot in this industry to sit there and say, I have to go to Black Hat and DEF CON. And so this is why throughout this entire conversation, I'm going to continue to remind your viewers and, and everybody who's listening to be real with yourself and to be honest with yourself when you're going into making this plan about why you would want to go to Black Hat or DEF CON. Um, because here's the thing, you don't ever have to go to Black Hat or DEF CON to be somebody in this career. The casinos are designed to trap you in them. Yeah, and spend money. And spend money, right? Like, like it's like for people who have never been to Vegas or ever been to a casino, the the it, you'll stand in there, you'll be like, "Where's the bathroom?" Yeah, <laughs> I want to drink. I just want a bottle of water. Where do I? Oh my god! You mean it's seven dollars for a bottle of water, David? Yep, yep. I mean, <laughs> if you're not drinking alcohol, right, or gambling. I, I can't see how a casino is that much fun. And, and, you know, and that's, and again, getting back to Neil's thing of being honest with yourself, if, if that's what makes you happy, if, if you, if you're like, oh, hell yeah, I want to go to Vegas because I want to sit in a hotel, get plastered 24 by seven and lose all of my money. And you can look yourself in the mirror and, and say that you guys are going to have a great time in Vegas. Everyone, David Bumble, really excited to welcome Neil Bridges back again. It's been too long, Neil. What have you it, been up to? Uh, I, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, just, just something about moving across the country, starting a new job. Uh, you know, you know, pandemic. I don't know. I mean, just insert any random life thing that that could have happened. But in all, here's the thing. In all seriousness, like, like it has been too long. Um, I hope I hope your audience is sufficiently mad at you that it's been too long. And it's definitely not my fault for moving across the country. No, it's, it's definitely mine. not. It's totally your fault. It's totally your fault. I made you move <laughs> across America. That's right. That's absolutely right. No, um, we've had a lot going on. I mean, uh, yeah, we uh, we moved. Um, and, and, and I don't know for, for those who, um, you know, who, who, who saw the previous studio set up, right? It took a lot of effort to build that studio out. And then to move across the country, tear down one studio. Uh, we actually tried to do recordings in a hotel. Uh, we you, tried to do our crazy. live. Yeah. yeah, we tried to do our live streams over hotel Wi-Fi. Uh, we tried to rent out a studio uh, in our new in our new state. Uh, uh, it was a total disaster. And so, yeah, we did take almost a month break of um, of re recording any content, and then buying a new house getting a new studio set up and so um 
welcome everybody to the the new studio setup which i'm i'm, I'm glad to say we're we're finally in at least a dunnish state on <laughs> looks great so um just for everyone's benefit for those of you who have you know haven't watched previous videos i've put some links below to previous videos that i've created with neil neil you have years and years of experience uh, military civilian you've done a whole bunch of stuff and i mean if anyone's interested in learning more about Neil, once again, have a look at his Twitch stream and other links below. Uh, we, we're not going to cover that again. There's a lot of good content that you can get on Neil's Twitch stream. But Neil, for today's video, you did some exciting stuff recently. You went to some interesting conferences. So tell us about it. Yeah, absolutely. So um, so obviously last year with the coronavirus pandemic, um, DEF CON and Black Hat both went virtual. Now, for those who aren't aware of what DEF CON and Black Hat are, just in case you're you're still new to this space, right? Um, DEF CON and Black Hat are kind of the two major, uh, you know, cybersecurity conferences that happen, um, every year. And I'm not counting conferences like RSA or even some of the smaller conferences, um, you know, that, that, you know, relatively speaking that go on. And so kind of Black Hat and DEF CON represent the cornerstone staple conferences that most people think about when they think about not just the cybersecurity, but the ethical hacking, um, you know, type of industry that's out there. Um, and so they happen every year around the August time period. Um, and they happen back to back. Usually you've got uh, Black Hat that happens first. Um, then you've got DEF CON that, that happens after that. And they both happen in Las Vegas, uh, Nevada, which is, um, you know, probably I, I joke with people, but it reminds me every single time when I get off the plane, um, uh, to, you know, in, in, in Las Vegas. Reminds me of when I got off the plane at Kandahar um, uh, or Bagram Air Base in, in Afghanistan. It's It's hot. It's a dry heat. It's 111 degrees. It's surrounded by mountains. Um, you know, it's it's it very much re reminds me of, uh, of of that that deployment that I went on years and years and years ago. But um, uh, it's 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 interesting. I've I've been um, I've probably been to those conferences. Gosh, at least a dozen times pre pandemic. Uh, last year we did a live stream. Um, we didn't live stream Black Hat uh, because they still were charging ridiculous amounts of money with Black Hat, and I'll get into that here in a little bit. But for yeah, we want to we want we want to make this controversial, so I don't <laughs> yeah. want to I didn't want to interrupt your flow. But uh, no, go no. on, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll kind of talk about the the pros and the cons and the Neil hates over these conferences. Yes, I want I want to hear it. Yeah, uh, but but last year was awesome for DEF CON. I actually um, we actually live streamed um, all the capture of the flags last year from DEF CON um, because they were free last year this was 2020 uh when they were free um part of it was free this year for 2021 but 2020 last year they were free and i encouraged all of my viewers to participate in all of the capture the flags because it was a once in a lifetime opportunity to actually be able to do the capture the flag events at at defcon completely for free um but so yeah so that's a little bit of background on the the conference obviously i've, I've been for a number of years um pretty seasoned in terms of Having watched that, both those conferences grow, um, uh, I'll let you kind of jump into to, to questions there, David. Yeah, let's get controversial. So first yeah. question is, are they worth going to? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Listen, we can end the interview now. <laughs> we can end the interview there. That's the bluff. That's the bottom line up front right there. I Look, I catch a lot of flack for this. Um, I have a, I have a love-hate relationship with those conferences, right? Um, and, and I talk about, I, I actually talked about this on my, on my Twitch stream pre pre going to, uh, to the conferences because people asked me about it as well. Um, and, and let's talk about, are they worth going to, right? When, when you think about, let's just take, let's take black hat, for example, right? Black hat, this, a single ticket to get into the talks at black hat is upwards of $3,000, $3,000. That's, yeah. That's a lot of money. Right? Also got a hotel and all the other stuff as well. That's right. That's right. My my hotel bill alone, right, for those days was was four or five hundred dollars a night, you know, to stay at a hotel there in yeah, Vegas. But, but not everyone's going to be staying in the best hotel in Vegas. Oh, oh, oh! Was that a little? <laughs> that's a little little jab at Neil. I, 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 I told you it's going to be controversial. Dave, David found jokes while I was in my hiatus. <laughs> that's right. David found really jokes. bad, really bad jokes. <laughs> but go on. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, I yeah, guess no, you can, Vegas can be expensive, especially when there's a conference. Yeah, I mean, Vegas knows when the conferences are. Vegas knows when to jack up those prices because oh, yeah. of that, those conferences. Um, and so, I mean, just just from a conference price perspective, it's it's really pricey. Um, 
and and then there's a lot of people who are like, oh, but Neil, you learned so much. And that's that's the part that I I, I want to dive the deepest into, David. Right? Is this this whole idea of of what you get out of a conference, how you get the most out of a conference, and what really determines is it worth it, right? Um, but on the surface, on the surface, I I I, I think that I think that. Some of these conferences are best attended when you don't have to pay out of your own pocket. But I think my 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 singular thing that I would tell people who want to attend either Black Hat or DEF CON is to have a plan. And that's something we could talk about when we get into it. But have a plan. Yeah, I mean, because I've been to like at Cisco Live and I, I don't know if you if you take the same view. I don't go to any of the talks. I just go to like the main presentation, if you like keynote perhaps, um, but it's for me, it's about networking. It's about yeah. meeting people. So, well, let's talk about the plan then, Neil. So yeah. how would you approach these conferences and how do you make the most of your time there? Absolutely, and let's and let's do like we always do, David. Let's talk about like everything from the beginner person who's going to the conference yeah. for the first time to the experienced person who is probably starting to wonder if they're getting the most value out of that conference um, to begin with. So. Um, you know, at first, if you're a beginner, um, so the, so the number one theme, you know, before we get into this, that I'm going to harp on a lot, David, is, is to be honest with yourself, right? And let's lay some ground rules when we talk about being honest with yourself. When you hear about these conferences and you're coming into the cybersecurity space, you're immediately lulled by this this mentality that oh my god black hat and defcon are the the cornerstones of my career and i'm nobody if nobody if i don't go to black hat and defcon we put a lot of imposter syndrome people um to to basically make them feel like you're useless if you don't go to these conferences and so it tricks people it tricks a lot in this industry to sit there and say, I have to go to Black Hat and DEF CON. So this is why throughout this entire conversation, I'm gonna to continue to remind your viewers and, and everybody who's listening to be real with yourself and to be honest with yourself when you're going into making this plan about why you would wanna to go to Black Hat or DEF CON. Um, because here's the thing, you don't ever have to go to Black Hat or DEF CON to be somebody in this career, period. Yeah. Die. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to hop on this as well, but yeah. I think, you know, a lot of these conferences happen in the U.S. Um, not everyone is based in the U.S., and some people are based in certain countries that make it really difficult to to go to the U.S. So, yeah, I mean, you've mentioned you don't have to go. I mean, Neil, we're jumping the gun like we always do, but mm -hmm. like the the all the there's a lot of recordings afterwards, isn't there? That's so, right. That's so, right. Like, why would I bother going? And, and that's that's something I talk about, too, in that whole vein of of not having to go. Right. Is, you know, at least for DEF CON, 100 percent of the recordings you will find online. Right. For everything. Yeah. Right now. Now, there are some smaller talks in some of the smaller villages that you may not get the benefit of. There are some hands on that happens in the villages that you may not get hands on. But let me let me again, let me break it down. If you go to the conference, it is so crowded you may not get the benefit of those hands on anyway, right? Um, we went to we went to a conference a number of years ago. We went to the car hacking village. Um, we had every intention of sitting at the car hacking village and spending a good day doing nothing other than participating in car hacking village. And this was one of the first years that car hacking village was there. This was right after they had hacked into the Jeep and and published the paper and everything like that. And it was standing room only. You had to elbow fight your way to get to the demos during the car hacking village that there was just no way that you were going to be able to participate in those demos whatsoever. And, and so that's that's the other thing is that, you know, everything that you're going to be able to see from a talk perspective on DEF CON is going to appear on YouTube within usually within prior to COVID um, within five to seven days. Um, I know last year, because they pre-recorded everything, they released all the videos before DEF CON even started. And I do believe that this year was exactly the same as well. They announced that their media server had been updated, I think two or three days before DEF CON had started with all the talks already published onto the media server before DEF CON even started. Yeah, so what's the point then? Exactly, exactly. You, so you tell me, Neil, is it worth going? Is it pointless? It, it, it's, it, it's, it, it, it's, it is pointless to go if the most common answer that I've heard from people that have, so so again, remember, I've led massive security teams in my entire career, Fortune 100 security teams. 
And, and every year pre-COVID, it was it was no doubt that I'd get asked by my team, Neil, I want to go to Black Hat or DEF CON. Can I go to Black Hat or DEF CON? And I would ask them why, because I want to hear the answers. And they're like, because the talks look really amazing this year. And especially for, for DEF CON, I would say, cool, if the talks look so good, you'll have no problem waiting seven days when they come out on video for them to watch on YouTube. And the look on their face, the blood just kind of drains because they're like, oh, shoot. Wrong <laughs> that answer. argument went out the window. Wrong answer. Yeah. <laughs> Wrong answer. So be honest with yourself. If you're going for the talks, then you can wait for the talks to hit YouTube before you see them. And that is okay. So again, be honest. It's not worth going just for the talks. One of the folks that I talked to, we talk about DEF CON in that realm. Let's talk about Black Hat really quick. Black Hat's a little harder to get the talks. Uh, sometimes the talks um, take a little bit longer from Black Hat. Sometimes they, they're not actually Black Hat official talks. Um, so Black Hat's kind of a little bit of a hit or miss. And so people are like, aha, Neil, I caught you. I go to, I can use that excuse for the Black Hat talk. Let's talk about the Black Hat talks for a second. Kind of two big things on the Black Hat talks. And I was talking with somebody this year at the conference who, who did attend several of the Black Hat talks. And he goes, Neil, I don't know why I... I um, I don't know why I con myself into going to this conference every year. So why is that? And they were like, there's nothing new at this conference. The talks are the same talks as they are every year. They cover the same topics. There's no new innovation that's coming out at Black Hat year after year after year, number one. And the second thing is you have to remember, let's be, again, back to being real with ourselves. If you think that there's a talk at Black Hat Let's say that it's the latest crypto hack that's out there, right? It's gonna, it's a, it's breaking down blockchain and it's gonna be the greatest hack in the entire world. Or you're gonna get some Active Directory secret that nobody else has out there in the entire world. Ask yourself this question, David. Does it make sense for them to do that talk at Black Hat and then retire from speaking, never give that talk anywhere else, never release a paper on it, never do a YouTube video on it. Do you think that there's a single researcher out there that's going to talk about something at Black Hat and then never talk about it ever again? I doubt it. I, think I doubt They're going to milk it. <laughs> they're going to milk it. Exactly. So chances are whatever talk they're giving at Black Hat, they're either going to release the talk on YouTube release the slides on SlideShare, talk about it at some other conference where the talk is going to be recorded. And so it's not going to be exclusive content to Black Hat. There is no licensing agreement between Black Hat and speakers that that talk is exclusive to Black Hat. So Neil, you're not selling this. So you, you, you've basically <laughs> told me it's, it's pointless going to these conferences. Why would I bother then paying all this crazy amounts of money to go? Yeah, and 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 that's there's there's that there's that. Let's let's you, you're trying to jump right to the to 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 convince me to go, and I'm not done bashing. I'm not done bashing okay, the conferences okay. yet. Bash, bash some more, and then <laughs> I, want, I want to hear all the reasons. I'm going to call this video. It's pointless going to Blackhead and and Defcon. So it's, it's, so tell me why it's pointless some more, so, and then you can tell me why you would even consider it because so you went so. So let's go to let's go to reason number two that people ask me all the time. You know, Neil, can I go to Black Hat or DEF CON? And it's the training, right? Oh, Neil, I'm gonna learn so much. Yeah, I'm as, as long as as long as there's ten of you and you can go to ten comp, <laughs> ten sessions at the same time, is that right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Let's and, and again, so so again, be real with yourself. That may seem like a really good excuse, like oh, I'm gonna go to a con I'm gonna go to a talk on Wi-Fi pen testing, and I'm going to learn so much about Wi-Fi pen testing, right? Or I'm going to go to the Wi-Fi hacking village, and I'm going to learn so much about Wi-Fi pen testing. Or insert any village here for, for DEF CON, um, and I'm going to learn so much. There are so many people, A, that especially go to DEF CON, that it is practically impossible for some of the more popular villages, which is, chances are that's probably some of the villages that you want to go to. Heck, I was surprised at how many people showed up to the ethics village. Ethics. Uh, ethics. There was a village two years ago on ethics and compliance, and I was surprised how many people showed up to it. Um, you know, there's going to be so many people at some of the more popular villages that trying to find a place to sit, there's, there is, let's call spade a spade. Those yeah, no, conferences are not those conferences are not great if you're trying to learn 
how to do something the first time. Um, if you're going to Red Team Village and they're doing a capture the flag, it's hard to sit down at a table at Red Team Village and be like, I've never done a capture the flag. I've never done most of this stuff before. Can I sit down here and can somebody help me just get started on doing Red Team Village CTF? I hate to tell you this. Those people there, there are very, very few people, if you can even find them in a sea of masses that will take the time to sit down with you and be like, oh, it's your first time doing a CTF. Let me help you with it. You're a script kitty. You shouldn't be here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's that toxicity that we talk about, David. Yeah. There are very few people, if you go into those villages, and, and the, the, the folks who put them on, so like for Blue Team Village, um, the guy, I have a mass respect for the guys at Recon Infosec and, and the open sock, uh, CTF for blue team is hands down one of the best blue team CTFs that I've, uh, I've done in my entire life. The guys at Recon Infosec have got it nailed, right? But they're so busy at DEF CON running the blue team village capture the flag that they're not going to be able to take the time to be like, no. how do I get started doing the blue team village CTF? They're not going to be able to take the time to do that. And so, yeah, there's just um, it's it's not very learner friendly in some of these villages. And on the the Black Hat side, so if we flip back over, go to the Black Hat side, you absolutely can learn stuff. You have to pay for it anywhere from, you know, fifteen hundred dollars to yet another, you know, two thousand dollars for the training to go to some of the Black Hat training. But guess what? Again, that training is not exclusive. All you're paying for is if you want that training to be done in person where you have access to the instructor, right? And then at that point in time, you know, you should be prepared to justify that the same way as if you were going to justify going to a SANS class or going to a boot camp or, you know, anything else like that, because that's effectively in the price range that you're talking about when you talk about actually going to attend some of the training that's a black hat. So I, I think myth number two that people try to get away with is, is oh, I'm going to take so much training when I'm at these events. And I think that that's, you know, if you've been, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you've never been, then there's this huge giant myth that this is like a, a conference that is built and designed for the learner to be able to go and actually learn anything from the conference. Yeah, you, you're, not, you're definitely not selling this. So you, you've basically told all of us we shouldn't go. So <laughs> any, more, any more reasons not to go? Uh, uh, I got a bunch of personal reasons about okay, why come Vegas, on, I, I wanna uh, hear it, I wanna uh, hear it. Look, Vegas is miserable. Vegas is miserable. <laughs> like, like you are, you are, you are stuck inside of a. Listen, listen, and, and, and this has nothing to do with Black Hat or Def Con. This is a hundred percent everything to do with Vegas. You're inside of a casino, man. I lo don't you love that sound? Oh, <laughs> I, I, I personally hate it. So I mean, yeah, Not I, I, I don't like Vegas. And uh, please. Please don't hate me for saying it, but Vegas isn't my cup of tea. Let's put it that way. Yeah, well, not only that, but it's like um, uh, the casinos are designed to trap you in them. Yeah, and spend money. And spend money, right? Like, like it's like for people who have never been to Vegas or ever been to a casino, the the it, you'll stand in there, you'll be like, "Where's the bathroom?" Yeah. <laughs> I want to drink. I just want a bottle of water. Where do I? Oh my God! You mean it's seven dollars for a bottle of water, David? Yep. Yep. I mean, <laughs> if you're not drinking alcohol, right, or gambling, I, I can't see how a casino is that much fun. And, and, you know, and that's, and again, getting back to Neil's thing of being honest with yourself, if, if that's what makes you happy, if, if you, if you're like, oh, hell yeah, I want to go to Vegas because I want to sit in a hotel, get plastered 24 by seven and lose all of my money. And you can look yourself in the mirror and, and say that you guys are going to have a great time in Vegas. <laughs> but I mean, hopefully, hopefully, you, when you go to these conferences, you're not spending your time doing that. You, you're actually doing something at the conference. So, I mean, okay, so you, you've yeah. told me that these conferences are pointless if you want to learn. Yeah. They want to. They're pointless if you're a newbie. They, 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 they it's not a nice environment because it's gambling and all the noise and all the associated stuff with that. Yeah. That's Vegas. Uh, is there any other reasons why you don't like them? No. Now, now let's now let's talk about let's talk about to your point the reason to go to these conferences. I mean, it's now a this, fortune for a lot of people to go, so it's it, got to be worth it. it. It does have to be worth it, and that's where my that's where the number three thing. And I do hear this from people who do want to go to Black Hat and DEF CON, and they say, "Well, Neil, I want to go for the networking." That is the right answer, but 
I'll say that most people, when I say most people, 90% of the people do it wrong. Okay. When people say, I want to go to Black Hat and DEF CON for the networking, right? Their idea of networking is to go to all of the parties, get drunk, <laughs> and network. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, and, and what, yeah, don't know what kind of networking that is, but it's not the right. networking that helps your career necessarily. Right, exactly. And let's put that in perspective, right? Black Hat, which happens the weekend before, uh, there are a few networking events that start on Monday, but then the parties uh, start on Tuesday, and there's usually four or five vendor parties uh, Tuesday night. There's there's four or five parties Wednesday night. And then DEF CON kind of starts on Thursday with registration um, and then runs through Sunday. And then it's really, you know, it's pool parties. It's, uh, it's it's you know, you know other associated tiny parties that happen basically anywhere from Thursday to to Saturday night. Um, there's a there's a DEF CON party. There's just various types of vendor parties. Excuse me, various types of vendor parties and things like that. Partying is not networking. Like just in case that wasn't blatantly obvious to your listening listeners, partying is not networking. Those vendors put on those parties. They spend tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars to do those parties so that when you say, I went to the Skyfall party on Wednesday night, they're like, oh, that was Zero Fox's event. This isn't a plug for Zero Fox. I don't represent Zero Fox. They're not a sponsor of any of my content. Um, but I know that Zero Fox spends tens of thousands of dollars every year to rent out the entire Skyfall lounge at the Delano to do their party every year on Wednesday night. But you'll not network with a single person from Zero Fox, and you'll be hard pressed to actually network with anybody else in the cybersecurity industry because everybody's up there drinking, you know, staring on the balcony down the strip, which don't get me wrong, the, the view of the Delano is a gorgeous view. It's probably one of the best in Vegas. Um, but you're not actually doing any networking. Here's how I think the right way to do networking is if you're going to go to Black Hat in Vegas, right? Um, when I found out I was going to go to Black Hat in Vegas, um, I spent the two and a half weeks, three weeks prior to arriving at Vegas, scouring my network, trying to set up meetings with people that I wanted to meet with. This is LinkedIn, um, yeah? Yeah, I, I went to LinkedIn. I went to Twitter. Um, I called people that I had really, really good relationships with, and I immediately started to set up dinners. I immediately started to set up meetings. I immediately started to set up small get togethers. Um, and I, and I basically built out a calendar, um, of a meeting schedule of who I was going to meet with. And so, um, you know, just kind of like my, my evening schedule for the week that I was there Monday night, um, uh, I met with my team at um at one o'clock i had a meeting basically a staff meeting with my team from one to three um i went back to the hotel because i was meeting with a ceo at 350. we had an hour-long meeting before we went to a CISO event um at 450 um where we met with i met with the CISO of mgm um hotels um there in vegas i met with um several other CISOs uh you know in the space and we stayed there for almost three hours literally handshaking CISOs, you know you know talking to them about their current problems in the space um you know before we left there and actually just did like a meet you know like a like an after action report at a restaurant uh before finally going back to my hotel room at midnight tuesday night was the same way tuesday night you know by three three o'clock i'd started meeting with people that i'd set up meetings with by 8 p.m i was having dinner with the chief commercial officer of another company um that dinner was a, a very intimate dinner with only about uh, uh 10 CISOs uh from other companies um, where we talked about the challenges that are being faced in the cybersecurity industry. Um, Wednesday night, I hosted my own dinner, my own exclusive dinner, which had about 18 um, uh, exclusive uh, CISOs and practitioners from across the space on Wednesday night. Um, and and you know, that trend is what happened pretty much the entire week that week. And then during the day, I would set up individual one-on-one -on -one meetings with people. I met a, a lot of new contacts on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, people that I'd never seen before, they'd heard me talk or give presentations or heard me on your channel or, or um, on, on my own Twitch channel. And we had, you know, little mini one-on-ones. But I think, you know, here's what I tell people. 
in in a week of being at those conferences, I didn't step foot. I take that back. I stepped foot in the Black Hat Conference business hall one time, but I didn't. I never bought a badge. I didn't pay for a single badge the entire time that I was there. I actually, I actually tailgated on somebody to get into the business <laughs> hall. Uh, to, I don't to, recommend that anyone else tries that. Okay, <laughs> but it worked. You, <laughs> but know, you, it hacked, worked. you hacked. You hacked black. Which one was it? Defcon. It was black. It was black hat. I, I hacked. hacked I, black, I, black I had. Hat. Okay. I hacked. I hacked black hat by by tailgating into the the the, the venue. <laughs> um, but no, I didn't buy a. I didn't buy a badge. I didn't buy a ticket. Um, I didn't buy a a, a, a single thing there because um, you know that wasn't money well spent. The money well spent was the individual time was the time with the CISOs was the time with you know networking with the folks but that was diligent effort that I put into to set up those networking contacts okay but Neil let me let me push you now cuz you yeah. know you and I we're going to push yeah. each other Neil that's fine for you to say that you're in a different level to most of us you know you're at this level yeah. but what happens if I'm new you know or you know is are these conferences worthwhile going to if I'm new into the industry and let's have only been in the industry for a year or two I, you know I can't meet with CISOs like you do what do I do? I think I think the answer is still yes. And I think the answer is still yes on networking. But I think my point of the story, right, is to be diligent about networking. If you're new to this space, right, and if you listen to, you know, mine and your Thousand Connect Challenge that you and I gave out yeah. at the beginning of the year, right, yeah. by now, most of the people who have taken that challenge, David, or at least the people who have tagged you and I in it, they've got a thousand meaningful connections in this space. And so if you think about that, if you if you had started the Thousand Connect Challenge in January when David and I first talked about it, and you were planning to go to Black Hat or DEF CON in August, by August, you've probably made a good amount of meaningful connections that you can use your network to say, I'd like to meet with somebody from X, right? The vendor list isn't secret, right? You know who's going to be at these conferences. It's a great opportunity for you to be like, I want to meet with somebody at Sentinel One. I want to meet with somebody at Splunk. And if you don't know anybody, if nobody in your network is there, then that means that you need to go back out to the Thousand Connect Challenge. You need to make those connections and you need to be like, I want to meet with somebody at X. I think that if you if you talk about the intentionality of going to Black Hat or DEF CON, um, if you say, well, I don't have anybody in my network, I wasn't able to get a meeting ahead of Black Hat or DEF CON with somebody at Sentinel One or Splunk or whatever the case is, whatever the case is, um, saying to yourself, I'm going to go to the business hall and I'm going to learn from these vendors about the tools that they have. And I'm actually going to go to a place where people want to talk to you. Listen, it's hard. It's hard to network with peers in your cybersecurity space at Black Hat or DEF CON. If you're an introvert, it's twice as yeah. hard, right? I wanted, I wanted I wanted to raise this because it's really hard. You know, Go this for is it. not a this is not a sales uh, conference. You know, in techies, a lot of techies are often much more reserved. So yeah, I, I broke your train of thought, but I, I wanted to. This is you, you're ahead of me, so go for it. Because well, no, this is this is the problem. You know, not all of us are are good with people in front of us. And, and, and so, like, so if you imagine yourself being at a conference, David, with twenty or thirty thousand people. And you really think that you're just going to walk up to random stranger X yep. and be like, hi, my name's Neil. I'd like to network with you. You are delusional. <laughs> yeah. You are delusional. <laughs> right? That's not how that works. And so, like, that's why I say, like, go to the business hall at least because those people want to talk to you. Now they want to sell you stuff. So, again, be real with yourself. They want to sell you something. Right? Yeah. But at least you can go and you can talk to people. You can make networking connections. You can learn about the technologies that are in our industry, right? I'm not saying, you know, that every technology is great, but at least you can see different aspects of people and you can talk to people and that helps to facilitate your network because you're just not gonna walk up to a speaker. You may be like, I'm gonna walk up, I'm gonna walk up to, to Will Schroeder, or I'm gonna walk up to, you know, um, somebody from Specter Ops who's giving a talk and I'm going to be like, I'm going to talk to that that person because I've been there. I've come off the stage and there's a line of 50 people that want to talk to you. Right. And they'd be like, Neil, I loved your talk. Thank you so very much. I love seeing you on Twitch. Thanks. Thanks. Shaking hands. You're trying to get off the stage. You're trying to get let the next person get on. You're trying to to figure it out. You're like trying to rope everybody into a corner. People are throwing their names at you. They're yelling at you you know, they're like, they're, they're, they're in your face. You'll never remember those people. I could definitively tell you, 
I don't remember a single person who saw me in the first five minutes that I came off stage for a talk. I don't remember a single person that has ever done that to me. Yeah, it's too many. It's too much. It's too much. Just be real with yourself. Be real with yourself is all I'm trying to say. So Neil, the we, we're recording this just after these conferences. So people can plan now yeah. for the next one. So yeah. now it's like really put effort into the thousand connection challenge. Um, really try and grow your network on LinkedIn and these places and have a plan in place for the next one. Is, is, do you think that's good advice? Absolutely. I think I think if if you're if you're saying God, I really want to make a diligent effort to go to Black Hat or DEF CON next year, start planning now, right? And and you know I'm a, I'm a fan of threes. I'm a yeah, fan I, of threes. I, I, I love the threes. Go go for it. So 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 let's do the threes, right? If you want to go to Black Hat or DEF CON next year, these are the three things that you need to do in the next twelve months. A, you need to take the Thousand Connect Challenge seriously and develop a thousand plus meaningful connections in the cybersecurity space um, and and think about people who you really 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 want to network with you would love to see them in person or at least companies that you'd love to see in person so that's that's step number one definitively take that seriously if your intention when going to these events is to actually participate in the hands-on and i'll use defcon because i think defcon's got more hands-on um, then Black Hat does. Black Hat has practically zero actual hands-on stuff that you can actually take part in at Black Hat. So DEF CON is, is obviously very, very, very hands-on. And so if your your intention is to do things like the capture the flag, like the blue team, the red team capture the flag, if your intention is to go to the villages and participate in the villages, I would spend the year honing your knowledge in those areas, right? If you are huge into IoT, I'd spend the next year studying and learning everything you can about IoT. And I tell people this frequently, if you're gonna go to DEF CON, I actually wouldn't spend a dime, I wouldn't spend an ounce of my time in the main talk area of DEF CON. I would spend all of my time in the villages, right? So Packet Capture Village, Red Team Village, Blue Team Village, IoT Village, um, Voting Machine Village, Social Engineering Village, right? All the villages that are out there, you know, look at those as specialties in your cybersecurity career track. And so for all you out there who have been in my DMs who are like, Neil, I'm super interested in crypto. Neil, I'm super interested in IoT. Neil, I'm super interested in exploit development. I would make it my goal to go to DEF CON and spend my entire time, or at least a large chunk of my time, in that village that 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 you're passionate about. That's going to be a great use of your time. But what I would say is, my number two, is in the 12 months that you have to prepare for that, I would hone my knowledge through self-taught studies before going into that event or going into that village right yeah and and so finally the third the third thing that that i would highly recommend you doing is look for a group of friends that you're willing to go experience this with especially if you're new great idea yeah, especially that's great, great advice new. great advice because here's the thing you're not going to network with people there I, I listen i hate to be cynical and I want you all to network. This isn't me telling you all I don't want you to network. It's going to be hard. It's probably harder than any of the technical things that you'll do there. And so if you get you two or three friends that are willing to go with you, then you all have a group that you can go to the talks with. You can then sit back at the end of the talks and talk about the, the talks and digest the group mentality of learning together. You can go do the hands-on labs together and bounce ideas off of each other, right? You can learn from each other's stuff. You actually have your own small little network there. And that makes it at least, if you don't make any friends there, which is okay if you don't, you at least can have your circle of friends to experience the conference with there. And it makes it way less lonely. Listen, would you rather go there and be disappointed because you didn't meet a single person or would you rather go there with a small group of your closest friends and all of you experience that together? Well, at least, you know, make uh, talk to some of your contacts that are going because there could yeah. be people like yourself that are going. Yeah. It's it's always easier to go with a friend. It uh, is. You know, it's like traveling. I've traveled alone. It sucks. 
Yeah. Traveling with my family is a lot of fun. But, yeah. uh, you know, you, you want to experience these things in life with someone. You know, it's, yeah. it's shared experience makes all the difference. It really does. And so you know, find some of your closest friends, your work colleagues, you know, make some connections that you can meet up while you're there. Um, do it. Do it as a group. You'll 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 enjoy the experience. So tell me, Neil, in summary, unless you've got some more, I love it when you go on these like high horses. <laughs> Anything else you want to say negatively about these conferences or and then summarize, is it worth going? Sure. Um, I, I don't think I've got too much. Like Again, and, and make sure that I want to make sure everybody understands my negativity is because people lie to themselves about the yeah. reasons why to go to these conferences. And so I think if, if you've got any of the three reasons that I mentioned before about why you've lied to yourself and told told yourself that you want to go to these conferences, make sure you're honest with yourself first and foremost and make sure that you you understand what it is that you're getting into. Um, I, I think in summary, right, I think if you have the right plan, if you if you strategically you know decide what it is that you are and are not going to get out of these conferences i think you can i think you can have a great time i i made more contacts this last year at defcon than i have or i mean at black hat than i have at any other black hat in the past but again that's because i was very very diligent about the networking that i chose to do going into that conference and i think everybody else can be equally as successful in doing so um do i think that they're worth going i'm going to stand by my answer of no no, I don't think that they're worth going. I think that COVID, um, you know, has proven that we can develop networking connections really, really well, especially over LinkedIn. For those of you who have taken my Thousand Connect Challenge, I think cybersecurity is is the biggest, smallest, tight knit community that's out there. Um, everybody wants to network with you, um, and and everybody knows that that net that Black Hat and DefCon aren't the sole center of the universe when it comes to networking. And, and so I, I don't think that you have to go to Black Hat or DEF CON to network. I think that we've proven through the couple last couple of years that you can network just as well over LinkedIn um, through some of these virtual conferences and things like that. And it, it's just as effective. So, no, I'm going to I'm going to stand by. No, I don't think it's worth going. So I'll disagree with you because there's go something to be said for meeting someone in person. Go even for it. if you even if you have a drink together or a meal together and you don't really get into techie stuff. It, a personal connection is often made when you when you meet someone in person. So what what do you say to that? I think my only my only caveat to that, David, is that is that I don't disagree with that statement in a vacuum. I disagree that you have to go to Black Hat or DEF CON to do it. Yeah, good point. Right. And again, you know, you're right. There's a ton of value to sitting down and do, doing dinners. One of the things that I personally miss from before COVID um, was my business dinners. Um, it would be it would not be out of the ordinary pre-COVID uh, for me to have three to four days a week where I'm having dinner, a business dinner with a different business contact, right? Wherever I was traveling, wherever I was going, right? Um, and there's a ton of value. I, I've, I can't even begin to tell you how many business deals I've done over dinner. Right. More so than in the office. I can't tell you how many business deals I've done on the golf course. Yeah. Right. I, I was talking with the CEO of Net Abstraction, uh, Gordon Lawson. He is a he's a brilliant CEO. He's probably one of the more brilliant CEOs I've had the privilege of meeting throughout my career. Happy to give you his link um, so that that you can um, you know, share with the audience. But he's he's an right, amazing, yeah. amazing CEO. Um, we were chatting on the golf course uh, maybe a month or month and a half ago or so. And he was like, Neil, I'm astounded at how few CISOs play golf. And let's put that into perspective. I know this isn't really about Black Hat or DEF CON, but just kind of some ancillary information about where business deals are made. We're talking, about networking. We're talking yeah, about networking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Talk about networking here. CEOs have known for years that golf courses are where business happens, right? You're for, you're for four hours, you're on a golf course with a group of executives, right? Whether it's you and a CEO, whether it's you and a CISO, whether it's you and a CFO, you're on the golf course for four hours. You're going to talk about business, yep. right? You're going to talk about business. CEOs have known this for years. That's why golf is so popular amongst the executive tier. He was saying he was astounded how few of CISOs actually play golf. And I think that that goes to speak to how we as a cybersecurity, especially as a CISO function, um, continue to misunderstand where our role is in the business relationship that we don't even understand that we can talk to CEOs on the golf course. Um, 
and, and so we, if you're thinking that like you know your career is predicated on you being on a conference room floor trying to spin up random conversations with your peers at a conference that continues to show that you're you know uh, we'll, we'll I'll, I'll i'll piss a lot of people off david you're so focused here on the microcosm that you think is your cybersecurity career realizing that your need to think at this picture you're you're misinformed you're misinformed yeah, it's it's a good point i mean it's um i think one of the things i i'll say this again neil one of the things i really like about talking with you is you are not seeing just like a one year career or a two year career it's like like i need to get root access on this system it's like you don't care so much about that because you're looking you need to look at your career over the span of 20 years so if you're just starting out, you know, these are it, it might not apply today, but it's important to have the vision. So basically my takeaway from this talk is I need to learn to play golf. Is that right? Well, so 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 <laughs> let me let me let me I'm tell a story. Gone. Let me let me tell a story though about that, because it's funny you bring that up. This goes back to what we did in the military, right? When we talk about offensive operations in the military, um, you know, the objective isn't to get root on a box, right? Let's put this in perspective. When we run operations in the military, it's like Al Qaeda is about to release their Inspire magazine. And the last time that they released their Inspire magazine, we had an increase in suicide bombers in the AOR, right? In the area of responsibility. And so our mission objective is to stop the release of Inspire magazine so that we can reduce the amount of lost casualties as a result of the war. I came up in my cyber career thinking about the big picture, yeah. thinking that everything that you do in cyber is about the big picture. It's not about getting root on a box. Getting root on a box is a means to an end. Learning how to hack networks is a means to an end. Learning how to threat hunt is a means to an end, right? It's always about the big picture. It's that's really, what I, that's really what I want to bring to people. That's what I want to bring to people. I want to bring the big picture to people. You know, I think, I mean, I, I want to say this for everyone who doesn't know, Neil and I are going to be creating a lot more content and we want to, I really want to try and put a different spin on this because there's a lot of content out there that has this techie vibe to it. But I think it's, you know, a career isn't, it doesn't, isn't, doesn't span a year. Hopefully not. You know, it spans God, decades. Not. And um, that's what we want to try and prepare you for is how do you, Neil, I want to take all your knowledge, all this years of experience and try and help people have this roadmap. We, we've given a lot of roadmaps, but I'd like to have like a career roadmap. Um, like how can we best help them, you know, make the most of their career and do as well as they can. So um, I wanted to ask you this question, throw you some horrible questions. <laughs> Would it make a difference depending on who's paying? So uh, if, you, if your boss is paying, we go. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 and, and this is my take on everything, David, right? If your company, if your company is paying, you go, hands yep. down. You don't, you don't, you don't complain about it, right? Um, and, and 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 that's a that's a very valid point, right? And I and I say this for a lot of things. Um, I'm a staunch advocate that you, as an individual, should not pay for a single piece of your training. Now, I've been with companies that are better about that than others, right? And and companies fail miserably, from my experience, at providing training for their people. But especially in cyber and IT. You, as the individual, should not pay for a single part of your training. When you're all. working for a company, you mean? Yeah. When you're working for a company, if you're work, it doesn't matter whether you're working for you know Joe's Pizza Shop, Pizza Shop, or Microsoft or Cisco, right? That company needs to invest in you, and um, and and so with that being said, should a should a company pay for you to go to Black Hat or DEF CON? Yes, but it's up to you to make the business case that it's worth their investment for you to go to Black Hat and DEF CON. But also, yes, if a company says, I'll pay for you to go to Black Hat or DEF CON, you take that trip 10 times out of 10. And I think, you know, there's different ways to to position this to a company. If you do great work in the, in, in the year, it could be a bonus. This could be your, like your bonus, one of your bonuses to to go and have a good time. Um, or, you know, you, you need to start talking to the company perhaps now saying, I'd like to go to Black Hat next year. What do I need to do to get me there that you guys will send me there and start planning for that? What do you think about that idea? I think I think that that is all uh, all those those one of the things we fail at again is the business side of the conversation. 
one of the, and I'm glad you brought up some of the the ideas, David, that you and I had. I brought this up on my Twitch stream, um, you know, a couple weeks ago after we we reconnected and everything too, is to share with people that like, you know, there's all these other things that nobody's teaching you about cybersecurity. Part of that is that conversation that says, I want to go to Black Hat or DEF CON. How do I get how do I get you as a company to pay for that? And typically the company's gonna look at you and the company's gonna want to know, well, what's in it for me? Yeah. You may not you may not like that answer, right? Because you're like, well, it's screw you. It's truth. But it, it's the truth. I'm gonna give you twenty thousand dollars to go to Black Hat or DEF CON. What's in it for me? Right. And so you need to start thinking about what is in it for the business for them to pay for you to go to Black Hat or DEF CON. Um, this is why being real with yourself on the top three lies that you tell about Black Hat or DEF CON, you know, be real with those lies, first and foremost. And then the second thing is understand what business value you actually can get back. I'll give you a case in point, right? You talk about networking, right? What does networking do for your business? Now, if you're a pen tester, maybe networking puts you in touch with um, your Fortune 100 company, you're uh, an incident responder for a Fortune 100 company, and maybe networking inside of another company inside your vertical. Let's say when I talk about verticals, let's say you're in retail, like you work for Best Buy or you work for Target or something like that. Maybe you're an incident responder for Target and you decide to make contacts with the incident response team at Best Buy. And then furthermore, you not only make contacts with the incident response team at Best Buy, the incident response team at Best Buy brings you to dinner with some of their key partners, like maybe Attack IQ, maybe Splunk, maybe Carbon Black, right? Whatever the case is, and you get to interface with them and hear how their security strategy works out inside of Best Buy. Now you, as the insert spotter and target, says, I'm gonna go network and learn from Best Buy on how they do their incident response strategy, and I'm gonna bring that knowledge back into Target to see if there's an opportunity for us to improve our cybersecurity stance. That's the type of way that you need to be thinking. I mean, how much money would you have to spend on training to get that? I mean, this is a good investment if, if you can do that. Exactly, exactly. If you're actually going to, let's say that you work in manufacturing, right? Let's say that you work for um, a, a company that produces something on a manufacturing line, right? Um, it might behoove you to ask for, to go to DEF CON, and literally spend your entire time on the in the IoT village or in the industrial control system village, right? Where both of those things are very, very prevalent on the manufacturing line. And so then your business case becomes, I'm going to go to a conference to learn specifically about the cybersecurity threats that affect our ability to make money because I'm going to be listening to how hackers hack the manufacturing lines. You don't have to talk about anything else that you anything else that's at the conference. You don't have to talk about the grand scope of everything else that's at the conference, but you're focusing on being able to securely protect the primary money maker that that company has in its manufacturing lines, and you're going to spend four days straight learning how hackers hack IoT and hack industrial control systems. Now you've got your business proposition, but you have to start thinking like the business thinks and not thinking like your you or your peers think. Yeah, you, I mean, the, from a business point of view, you, what the company's investing what, 20K or whatever it is to send you there, they're going to want a return on that investment. So you make it easy for them. Make it yeah. easy for your boss to see the return. And to David's point, it's okay to negotiate into, you know, your when you go to take that job, hey, Black Hat and DEF CON are really, really important to me. On average, it costs about $20,000 to go to Black Hat or DEF CON. Um, if the company doesn't, you know, doesn't typically pay for these conferences, I would like for those conferences to be included in my salary negotiation that you will set aside $20,000 every year for me to go to Black Hat or DEF CON. I like right? that. That's I like that. So straight from, straight from the beginning. Well, and, and, and I'll give a little hint, David. You know, you and I talked about producing additional content. Um, negotiating salaries and, and negotiating your job is content that I want to produce more of because Definitely. I think that we're, we're, we're failing to have open conversations about that in the cyber industry. Yeah, I mean, the, the, just for everyone's benefit again, Neil and I have got a lot of content we want to create. So put comments below, let us know what you, Absolutely. You know, what questions you've got. But I, I really want to take this to, to a different level and not just have techie content. Okay, Neil, another question. Content creation versus conferences. What would you advise 
a diff- someone in the different you know pa- path in their in their career what e- should they do should they focus on creating content like networking on linkedin or should they concentrate on going to conferences as an either or type of question david well i mean or both or what 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 should they focus on i think i think if you're early in your career i think if you're less than 5 years in your career you shouldn't think about going to a conference I think if you're less than five years, my personal opinion, if I look back on my career, if I look back on, on you know, the 20 some odd years that I've been in this space, right? Unless someone's paying to send you because they like uh, you. Unless somebody's, yeah, unless somebody's paying to send you, going to Black Hat or Def Con be the furthest thing from my mind. When you talk about producing content, David, and I'm a huge advocate th- for this on my Twitch streams. I talk to folks about my uh, about this on my Twitch streams all the time. You should be producing content like a, like a, like a MFR, right? You should be, you should be producing <laughs> like... Yeah. Like your your brain is absorbing knowledge. Like if you've taken the thousand connect challenge, if you've listened to what we've talked about and you've done all the free training, if you're active on try hack me and hack the box, um, you've got so much content that you're ingesting. You should not be afraid to be turning back around and producing all of that content uh, to the world. Um, I've got a guy um, who um, um, he's uh, he's he's in my community. Um, I'll give him a small shout out on your channel. Stuns yeah, and Roses. Yeah. yeah, Stuns and Roses. His name's Braden. He came to the community um, with nothing. And he listened to what we talked about with Try Hack Me and Hack the Box and and, uh, and all the free stuff, right? And he went out there and and this this dude is crushing it. He is in our Discord all the time, in the study groups that we've got. Um, not, just, not just learning Try Hack Me, but also helping people with Try Hack Me. And he takes all of his learnings and he's listened to what we've talked about when it comes to content production. And he has turned right around and he is producing videos on YouTube and he's producing, you know, write ups that he puts up on LinkedIn. And you at, talk to him. And I encourage the community to reach out to Braid, reach out to Stuns and Roses, um, you know, via my community. Yeah, I'll, put, I'll, put, I'll to, put links uh, links below if you want me to, Neil. Absolutely. Um, because when you see the value that he has gotten out of the growth of his network by simply going through the learning process and then sharing that learning process out through content creation, he's gonna, ha- I can tell you, I've watched a lot of people come up in this career, he is gonna have an amazing career because of that process that he's going through. And so I would say, back to your original question, yeah, 100%. People who produce content now, who who are in their learning, if you're under five years and, and you're producing content, you're sharing out with the rest of the world, you're learning advices and experiences, um, and you're helping other people come up, that is the most valuable part of your five years that you could see. Now, if you're five to 10 years in this career, um, you should have already been producing content. If not, I'd still advise you to produce content. But by the time you've been five to 10 years in this space, you should have had a really, really good network built, or you should be at least on the way to, you know, having a really good network built based on some of the stuff that you and I have talked about, David. And at that point in time, you know, I could see an argument being made to going to these conferences and reconnecting with your network or using these conferences to expand out your network. I met, I met four new CEOs this year that I had not met in my entire career um, in one meeting. And these were all four CEOs who were like, Neil, let's talk after Black Hat. I really like what you're doing. I'd really like to, to learn more about it, right? I, I met the, CC, the CISO at MGM Resorts, which I'd never met before, who when we talked about our stream, uh, he was super excited about being a guest on our live stream. Um, you know, and sharing his experience as a CISO with our entire community, right? And so there's, there's, you know, when you're five to 10, I think that those are times where you can make an argument that the networking aspect of Black Hat or DEF CON, and, and David, you and I are going to have this conversation in February when RSA comes around, yeah. right? That's where I think that those, you know, you, you could make an argument that the networking aspect of going to the conferences is worthwhile. Yeah, I, I like that. I mean, it's... um. I think Neil, we should we should do that more, and to to incentivize people, um, you know, if you help out on Neil's Twitch stream and get involved in this community, we'll also shout you out. So yeah. let's help others. Um, it's nice to always have examples. I always like to say, Neil, you and I are a lot further in our careers, so it's always <laughs> nice to feature someone who's showing others how to do it when they're starting out or at a different point in their careers. So that that will be great as well. 
Okay, so we've been talking for a long time now. Anything else you want to say, or have you killed it now? I think I've killed it. I think I've killed it. Happy to happy to bring anything, uh, you know, any comments anybody's got in your comments, or head on over to my Twitch stream and, and yell at me on Twitch, and i got no problem being yelled at on my own Twitch stream. Yeah, I mean, for everyone who's watching, please put comments below, stuff you'd like me to ask Neil. Uh, you can ask him live on his Twitch stream. Highly recommend that you go and do that. Neil and I have got a lot of ideas, things we want to try and do, but... As always, give us your ideas. Let us know what you, you want to see on the channel. Neil, thanks so much. Thank you, David.